Today's video on candlestick chart and trading is going to be very, very basic. We're not going to get into all the details of Japanese candlesticks. If you want to do that, there's plenty of books out there that will take you through many different variations of those patterns. But what I want to share with you today is the logic behind those patterns. So let's start with the very beginning. And this is Japanese candlestick 101. What is a bar? Okay, so what is a bar? Well, let's bring up a little picture there. And let's show you what a bar is. There it is. That is literally a bar. <laughs> okay. Well, if you're health conscious, no, that's a bar. That's where we should all be. After we're done trading, go to the gym, go to the fit bar. But if we're traders, okay, that's a bar. Now, let's look at the logic of what this actually means. So we're going to look at two things. Number one is the range of the entire bar. So from high to low, that's very important. And then we're also going to look at the relative position of the open to the close within that range. So does it close at the top near the high? First of all, does it open near the low and close near the high? If so, and it has a wide range overall, then that is considered a very bullish one bar pattern. So again, the two elements there that are very important are the range of the entire bar from high to low and where it closes in relationship to that high and low. All right, let's go and look at a uh, bearish, well, that's one bar logic. Okay, now the uh, opposite of that would be, of course, where it opens near the high, closes near the low, and again, remember it's very important, it's not just that the bar is red or green. This is something I see a lot of people making mistake with, especially beginners, because red, green, they just get enamored with those colors. Do not get enamored with those colors. They don't mean as much as you think they do, except in the right context. So in this context where you have a wide range bar from high to low, or where'd my drawing tool go? There it is, great. <laughs> from the low of the bar to the high, that's a very wide range bar, and we close near the low, okay, then that does qualify as a very bearish bar. That's one bar logic. All right, now, uh, as contrast to that, now here we have, again, a wide range bar from high to low, but the real body is very narrow range, but the point of this one is that it closes near the low, and therefore that is a bearish bar. This area up here is what we call a rejection of value. The market has rejected those higher prices, and it has said, nope, we're not going to buy at those prices, and therefore it is a bearish bar. All right, so that's another type of one bar logic. Then we can move on and take the opposite of that, of course. And notice, by the way, that now we have, on the last one, we had a green real body, but it was bearish. Here we have a red, red real body, but it is bullish. So that's why I say the colors don't mean that much in certain contexts. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But the bar from low to high is wide range, covers a lot of price. Um, in this case, the real body, not as wide range. And it closes, now it closes here. So it's closing near the top of the range. Again, you've got a long wick at the bottom. And what that really means is all these prices were rejected here. If we had our actual chart up, we we're looking at the prices over here in the right axis. Then all those prices were rejected during this period, whatever period of time that is, whether it's a five minute bar, or a daily bar, or a 60 minute bar, whatever, during that period of time, the market, market participants, they rejected those lower prices. And that's what makes it a bullish bar. So all these prices have been rejected, and therefore, um, overall, just from a one bar perspective, which we'll get to in further videos, we're going to have multiple series on this. Um, no, for that one bar at least, that is a bullish pattern. Now two bar logic, we move on to the next phase. So now we're looking at two bars and just these two bars in relation to each other. So we have a bearish bar here, followed by a bullish bar. And basically this bar is negating the bar before it. And that's the key issue here. So another word, uh, another way of saying this, would be that the green bar 
invalidates the red bar because the red bar was bearish. And now the green bar, the very next bar, the market participants have said, hmm, whatever happened during this last period of time, we're no longer considering that valid. And now our sentiment is bullish. So within one bar, within one price period, the market has changed its mind changed its sentiment and now it is bullish so that is a two bar logic pattern and it is i call it invalidating the previous bar so we'll get to some of that in the future here whether one bar validates or invalidates the next one here's just the opposite example of course so here we've got the um, bullish bar and then this bar bearish so the bar on the right, the most recent bar, is invalidating the bar before it. So that's how I logically look at, without necessarily having to learn all the, um, the fancy schmancy Japanese names. Again, not discounting that at all. If you want to become an expert at candlestick patterns, get into all the details, that's great. Go for it. Uh, I find that I do fine just by looking at these basic logical patterns. Now here's another logical pattern. Again, two bar logic. So we've got a bit of a uh, green bar here, a bit of a bullish bar. Now notice on this one, again, the things that we're looking at range of the bar from low to high, not as much, not as much. So that means it's not as bullish. Closes near the high. Okay, so that's a bit of a bullish sentiment. And by the way, another thing you can look at as to where it closes, you can look at the um, percentage within the bar where it closes. So from high to low, let's say that that's 50%. So I would say if it closes within the top third, I consider that bullish. If it closes within the bottom third, I consider that bearish. That's how I do it. I divide the bar into thirds. Middle is neutral. Now, so that's a bit of a bullish bar, not super bullish, but a little bit. Uh, but then this one is very bearish. And why is this very bearish? Well, again, it's more wide range from low to high. We get a narrow range bar here or um, real body. But the more important thing than the range of that is that, again, rejection of value concept. All these prices up here, if you want to take it over to your right axis, these prices up here were all rejected. And in other words, the market, yeah, there were some trades that occurred up there, but they couldn't get enough. It's really about supply demand. There wasn't enough supply demand imbalance to make it go up, and therefore uh, there weren't enough um, people who would uh, buy. And so, just like anything else, what is something worth in the marketplace? Well, whatever someone is willing to pay for it. People were not willing to pay more for it. Right, and here's just the opposite example, same thing, but I like to show both bullish and bearish examples. So here we had, again, a bit of a bearish bar, followed quickly by a very bullish bar. And the reason we know that's more wide range and, again, rejection of value. Now, the rejection of value, one thing that's very important on this is that if you're going to apply that rejection of value logic, the range of the wick must be very wide range very wide range. So that's why we still need a wide range bar here from low to high, and we need it to open and close in the top third. And that's what actually tells you there's a rejection of value there. So those are all examples of the market um, invalidating the bar before it. Okay. Now this one, I just will finish with this one for this video, and then we'll follow up with another video. Uh, here we have two bar logic. What is this? Well, we have a very nice wide range bullish bar followed by a narrow range bar. Now, any kind of narrow range bar at all from high to low, I consider just a neutral bar. I just consider them all neutral. I know in classic Japanese uh, candlestick patterns, they have all different sorts of meanings. I get that. I respect that. But for me, the markets are so big, so massive, so international, people trading all different time frames, methodologies, indicators, all kinds of stuff that they're a bit messy. And so therefore, you've got to allow for that messiness. And so anything that is a narrow range bar, I just consider a neutral bar. I don't care if it's green. I don't care if it's red. I don't care if it closes at the top third, the bottom third of the bar. If it's narrow range from high to low, then 
I just consider it a neutral bar. So this bar does not validate or invalidate the previous one. It's just neutral. And so therefore the sentiment that we would have in the market at this time would just not change. Since we have a neutral bar that follows the bullish bar, our sentiment is still bullish. Okay, it just doesn't change because, um, well, yeah, it's just followed by a neutral bar. The market's literally just paused for one period. So we're going to stop there, and there will be a part two coming out after this where we'll get into more detail, and believe me, you need more detail. This is not enough to be trading with. We'll talk about um, volume. We'll talk about the relationship of the candles within the entire chart, all of that, and that's what you really need to be trading. But we start here at the very kernel. So if you found this video helpful, uh, feel free to uh, let me know in the comments below. Give it a thumbs up. And also, I have a uh, special offer for you where I'm giving away one of my courses absolutely free. And in this course, I'm going to give you a complete trade setup called the rubber band trade. And in that, I give you the actual entries, exits, when to get in, where to get in, all that stuff, all the rules for it. It's a very objective price pattern is what it is. It's a price structure on a chart. The rubber band trade, absolutely free, my gift to you. Just click the icon on the top right hand of the corner of this video and um, we'll send that over to you.